Well, our next guest was a poor, shy, non-athletic farm boy, but you will recognize him here as a macho superstar. Chuck Norris is fighting for everyone who can't fight back. Hold on! Don't step on any toes. I don't step on Yes, you wouldn't want Chuck Norris to step on your toes or even to act a bit annoyed with you. He's a six-time world champion in karate. He's a tough guy in the movies, and you don't want to make his day. But it turns out that he wants to help people uh, conquer their fears and insecurities, and he's here to tell us the secret of his own inner strength. Let's have a nice welcome for Chuck Norris! Chuck, 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 you know, you're a very successful individual. You are. Six-time world champion, six consecutive years in karate. And the, another interesting statistic, 22 movies you've made, they've all made money. The only other star who ever did that was Elvis Presley, so that alone is good. <laughs> but there's another thing. You've been married 30 years. 29, yeah, 29. going on 30, yeah. Celebrating your 30th anniversary this year, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, we spend so much time in this program talking about marital problems and relationships, <laughs> and not that much talking about karate, that I'd like to begin by asking you, what's the secret of a happy marriage for 30 years, Chuck? Oh, I think uh, each person giving 70%. You know, my wife, uh, I, I really, I credit my wife because she's been so supportive through me, through my career. And uh, I've always worked hard all my life, and she's always been my biggest supporter. And, uh, and I think communication, too. I think you've got to keep a channel of communication going at all times. There was a point, according to your book, which, by the way, is an interesting book. It's called The Secret of, the Secret of Inner Strength, My Story by Chuck Norris. You uh, candidly admit that there was a point when success came along for you, and the marriage was rocky, and there was a separation. What got it back? Well. Uh, I just sold my school. I sold my schools to the conglomerate and had a, and got a, a big influx of money for the first time in my life, and you know driving a new Cadillac and all this stuff here, and uh, all of a sudden you know life looked like it'd be more fun on the on the free highway, and uh, so I kind of told my wife that I thought I needed some space, so she left me and went all the way to Florida. So she <laughs> gave me a lot of space. What did that space feel like? Well, after about four months, I was begging her to come back home. You know, the bachelor Why? life. Well, you know, I went right from, I got married at 18. My wife was one month 17 when we got married. And I went right from a mother to a wife, you know, and now here I am trying to wash clothes. And <laughs> I didn't know which end of a washing machine was up. Yeah, but I mean, you could have hired a maid. I know. No, truthfully, I liked the relationship. I, I enjoyed the relationship of a companion. Yeah. And uh, I've seen experiences with other friends and who have gone from one relationship of a, of a marriage right into another one. And it always looks like they jump from the frying pan into the fire, you know. And and uh, I just I just really love my wife, and I don't think anyone could replace her. What What do you say to somebody who's who uh, would describe you or put you in the category? And this is not as a negative here, but would describe you or put you in the category as a hunk, you know, as a <laughs> sexy well, hunk. What do you think about that? Well, I don't think I am, you know, because I mean I don't have the muscles that Arnold Schwarzenegger or Stallone has, but. Uh, um, if they do, they do. I don't, I, I, I don't see it. I don't know. Is it, I can't, how can I ask you that? I can't answer that question. All right. <laughs> in your book, page 107, you say, I think it was page 107, you say something here I'd like you to elaborate on. Because I think if you could do this in life, you'd be a hap people would be happier. You say, I consider worry to be wasted energy. In my view, the best thing you can do when faced with a problem is not worry about it, but to get the job done the best way you can. There are moments during that low period when I started feeling depressed, but I always regroup and say to myself, hey, get your act together. Are you, is that true? Mm -hmm. You don't worry about things? No, because it doesn't do any good. The thing is, let's say you worry about a problem. So here you are worrying and all this stuff. All of a sudden, the problem's solved. All that anguish for nothing. You know, <laughs> The thing is, worry doesn't solve the problem. It actually hinders the problem. What you've got to do is try to find ways of solving that solution and, or that problem, mm -hmm. finding a solution for the problem. And if you do, then, then you, you don't have time to worry about it. You're and, able to live by that. Well, well believe me, I, you know, from the book, as you know, yeah. I've gone through a lot of ups and downs. The people see strictly my success, but they don't know where I came from. A kid who grew up in the back hills of Oklahoma 
who was totally non-athletic, and I won the World Karate Championship. And the kid who was extremely shy in school, who never even had never even done a high school play or a book report, and now I'm doing this. Um, the thing is, you find formulas, you find things that will help you work toward well, what you want. As I see it, in your life, it's, it, it was and still is some disciplines that you learned, mental disciplines you learned from karate. Would you agree with that? That was the beginning of it, yeah. But again, you learn philosophies as you go from experiences in life. You start uh, learning philosophies and things that will help you work. Like for me, I'm very goal-oriented. I, I must have a direction for me to get up in the morning. I gotta know what it is that I wanna do. And it's like when I was a karate fighter. All I wanted to do was win a local karate tournament in LA. But once I won it, I thought, well, how about the state title? So then the state title became the next goal. And then when I won that, then it was the national, international, then the world. If I had said I want to be the world champion when I first started fighting, it was too far beyond my conception. But I, but I had realistic goals, goals that I felt in my heart I could achieve. The same thing in the movie business. You know, I, I had no idea I'd be where I am sure. today when I first started. I just wanted to do a movie, anything, just to try to get some experience. At, how old are you, 47 now? Mm -hmm. At age 47, what is your next immediate goal? Well, hopefully, <laughs> to get this book going, hoping, hoping it's a successful, and, uh, and I got a movie out now called Braddock Missing in Action 3, hoping that mm -hmm. it will be successful. Those are my immediate goals. Just really working, working on the promotion of those things. I've read someplace that you say at this stage of your life, you're stronger and quicker mm -hmm. than you were at the time when you were a, when a champion, a fighter. but you had to work harder at it. Well, the thing is, my method of training today is more scientific. I train three hours a day, six days a week. And, uh, but it's more of a scientific, scientific method of training than it was, say, 20 years ago. And uh, I can, you know, now I can do the full splits I couldn't even do when I was a fighter. You know, I, my kicks are much stronger and faster now. Can you just take a moment? You, you, one of the, the great movies that people still remember is your movie with Bruce Lee, Return of the Dragon. Yeah. It had that amazing fight scene. Yeah, in, right. Uh, it's still a classic today. Still a classic. Tell, just tell us what, just off the top of your head, comes to mind when we talk about that fight scene with you and Bruce Lee. Well, the whole thing is, Bruce was a tremendous martial artist, and when we did the fight in the Coliseum in Rome, he just said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'll do these techniques, you know? And he said, okay, I'll do those. So it's kind of a, it was kind of an ad lib type of a fight. But I think what made the fight so spectacular, it wasn't so much just all the karate that we do most of the time in pictures, but it was the inner relationship between he and you I, and Bruce, the yeah. looks and the little emotion between he and I as we're fighting that made that move, you know, those, because there's been fights that were better technically than the, than the one with Bruce, but it was, it was that mental thing between ha, he mm -hmm. and I that made it work, you know, when I knock him down, or he knocks me down, and he goes like, you know, all these little things, right? It was just all, all these little nuances that made them fight. One another thing I've always observed about you that I find interesting is you seem to be such an interesting mixture of violence and gentleness. Mm -hmm. And karate is violent. But every time I've seen you, we've met about three or four times, yeah, right. you seem to be a very gentle, mellow guy, well, centered. Well, it's like when I was a fighter. You know, I'd be walking down the aisle to the ring and I'd be shaking hands and, you know, and saying hello to everybody. But once I walked into the ring, my whole demeanor changed because here's the man across the ring who's not my block off. And so I had to change my attitude. I had to become much more aggressive and almost animalistic. And when I fought him, then after the fight was over, then I'd go back to more of a mild individual. And that's basically the philosophy of my movies. The guy who isn't looking for trouble tries to avoid it. But when he's put into a position that he's got to face it, yeah. like we would have to do in real life, then he becomes that person to deal with that situation. Uh, Chuck, I want to thank you. I want to recommend this book. I read a lot of it. It is called The Secret of Inner Strength, My Story. Well directed, an excellent book for young people, too. Oh, I mean, I think if you've got a goal to accomplish, you can find some answers here, particularly for young people who may be like you were when you were 16, 17, 18 years old. Nice to see you again, Chuck. Thank you, Bill. Take care and good okay, luck. Good. We'll be back right after this.